A lot of talk this week about Panthers getting a different quarterback. A couple things happened. So the talk is Baker potentially going to the Panthers. Robbie Anderson came out and said no. No! Straight up and clarified that he for sure does not want Baker there on a second post. So Baker's out in Carolina unless they want to get rid of Robbie. But, I mean, Robbie apparently is cool with Jarvis Landry. Obviously, Jarvis played in Cleveland. And Rashard Higgins is on uh, Panthers roster. So, you know, him and Robbie have talked. And I don't think these guys like Baker as their quarterback. And then we get to a lot of reports coming out that the sixth pick with the Panthers might be an offensive lineman. And if they go that, then they're going to want to trade for Jimmy G. What do you think about that? I think it's a pretty viable option. So if we're looking at this year's draft class of quarterbacks, is there anyone you would even feel comfortable taking with that sixth pick? If I had to do it, I would say no. I would get a bridge quarterback because next year it's going to be stacked. You're going to have Caleb Williams. You're going to have uh, CJ. You're going to have, um, what's the other kid? Bryce, right? Yep, Bryce. Even though he's small, I don't really like him, but he's still going to be there. So you're going to have a lot of quarterbacks on the board next year. So why not roll the dice? Hey, we have Jimmy here. Um, Do what the San Francisco 49ers did. Hey, let's take a page out of their book. Jimmy, let's see if he can be our quarterback. And if not, if he gets hurt again, all right, oh, well, we're going to roll with Sam Darnold anyways. We might as well just bridge it out. And then we have a pick next year. That's what I would do. I'd feel more comfortable doing that than having than feeling like I am have a gun to my head and I need to make a decision at quarterback. And it has to be one of these young guys that is really developmental anyways. So why, if you're going to take a year, why not start with a, a year next year where you're going to have a higher base with a rookie quarterback on a deal? That's just where I'm coming from. I don't think any of these guys are really going to be the guy, at least not for the next few years and if you're going to do that why not just wait a year and get a guy that you feel better about yeah I think it makes a lot of sense to just uh trade for Jimmy give the Niners a third round pick and use that first round pick you can even trade back and get more picks to make up for that Jimmy trade but low fill out your roster Carolina has a lot of holes that they need to fill uh one developed developmental quarterback isn't going to fix all your problems and it could potentially lose Matt Roll his job in two years. If this quarterback doesn't work out in the next two two seasons, then it's looking really bad for Roll. So I think smart move, trade for Jimmy. Even if you do draft someone, you could get out of Jimmy's contract in a year and let him move on. You guys move on with your future. And the last thing, last piece of this puzzle that's going on in Carolina right now, Ben McAdoo the greatest Giants coach of all time, who is the Carolina Panthers uh, offense coordinator now, had a press conference where he named Sam Donald the starting quarterback of the Panthers. Do you think this was a misstep, a miss, uh, him misspeaking? Or do you think they've already internally agreed that Sam Donald's their quarterback next season? I think he just did a, oh yeah, that, that's going to be our quarterback. And then he even said it later in the interview. I misspoke. I kind of put my foot in my mouth. So I think he, it was just a reaction. I think he heard the name Sam Darnold. He was like, yep, that's going to be the guy. And then he took a step back and was like, ah, oh, damn, shouldn't have done that. I think it was just reactionary. I think when you are, he's used to being the head coach. And if you ask him about a quarterback, he's going to be like, yes, that's our guy. It's uh, basically the, the Rosen thing. Josh Rosen is our guy. Pretty much that just happened with Sam Darnold. Man, must feel uh, pretty bad to be Sam Darnold today. <laughs> yeah, seeing ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> He's seeing ghosts in the offseason as well. Uh, I think just going back to the Jimmy to the Carolina trade, I think it just works out perfect for both teams because we'll, we'll get rid of Jimmy. They'll give us Sam Darnold. He has a little bit. I think he has $18 million on his contract, so we save a little bit of money. And Kyle gets a solid backup quarterback who he can work with. I think he's a upgrade from Nick Mullins big time. 
and Kyle can actually feel comfortable having that guy on the roster and waiting in the wings in case Trey gets injured. I think it's a good play. I think it, again, it doesn't hurt. It's less money. Yeah. It's still a good chunk, but realistically who cares if we were going to keep Jimmy on the roster, which knock on wood, I hope we're not, it'd be less of a, a hit. So I'm cool with it. Yeah. And I think Darnold's a guy that the team would know coming in that he's not a guaranteed starter. So the team would feel comfortable with him in that backup position. And, you know, if he plays his card right and uh, is a good teammate, he could do the Marcus Mariota thing and go be a starter next year somewhere else, you know? all If you're connected to Kyle and you ha- put it out there that you're a good team guy, you're going to get a contract and you're going to get a shot. Look at Mitch Trubisky. Trubisky just one year out of, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Hey, he's a great guy. I would let him date my daughter. Like all these like just – ridiculous things and it's like yeah you know what mitch looks pretty good let's go ahead and give him a and you know what uh, he's got he's got a shot you can do the same thing with sam and you know what all the mistakes that he made on the field in the past are erased because people will say oh he's a great guy and he was a locker room guy so he was a hard worker he was no there every day up, no one brings up the interceptions or how he couldn't move the ball down yeah. the field. so no. great guy great guy so, I mean, teams viewed Sam Darnold as the number one pick in that draft. So if he can sit for a year, it's almost like um, the thing where I don't know who said it. I think it was Colin Coward, where he's like, if you get fired as a head coach, take the next season off. You want to be out of the headlines. You don't want to go into a, scramble into a new job and lose again because then you're forever tainted. If you take a full season off after you're fired, relax, hang out with the kids, and then you come back into the coaching pool, everyone will want you because you've been away from the headlines. All the bad stuff is kind of washed away. And then, you know, you just hit the reset button on your image and your brand. So I think the same goes with backup quarterbacks. If you are a bad starter, but you had potential and people saw that you had potential and you go be a backup for a year, even two years, You could jump back in that free agency pool and teams will look at the positives in you. He's still only 24 years old. He comes back as a 25 year old free agent quarterback. Who's to say one team looks at the draft and says, Hey, we're not in position to get a quarterback. Let's roll the dice on this guy who was a number uh, first round pick. Yeah. And best case scenario. Hey, you know what? Starter gets, goes down for a game or two. Marcus Mariota. Teddy Bridgewater, I think it was six games, and he looked good in all six. Got a starting job after. Mariota, starting job now. Uh, yeah, I think it, you know it's one of those things where I'd feel pretty good about it. You know, I think he could use it. We could use it. It works. Yeah, I mean, Trubisky didn't even have to play it again. I know. 